good about having a little device like this in your pocket? Well, a lot of things. One is it's a piece of hardware, which means we can hook up and listen to different events that are in the world around it, including the accelerometer that's inside an iPhone or an Android device. We can actually observe the accelerometer and it provides you with three streams of data, an X-axis, a Y-axis, and a Z-axis. Not sure how that goes, but in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how NativeScript integrates with the device accelerometer. That's coming up. Welcome back, this is Alex Ziskind. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Here we do native script tips, tricks, and tutorials. And in this video, it's gonna be the first part of a couple of videos on the accelerometer and how to use it with native script. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use the accelerometer in a most basic way. And then, since the accelerometer is essentially a stream of data, it's actually perfect for using with RxJS, RxJS observable streams. So I'm gonna show you how to convert a stream that's coming from the accelerometer into an RxJS observable stream. And then in the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create an effect using the accelerometer that looks something like this, and I call this floaties. This is a request of one of my students on nativescripting.com. By the way, if you don't know about nativescripting.com, it's where you can learn native script. We have video courses from beginner level to mastering native script in Angular, Vue, and Core. So check out that site, and there's links down below along with a discount code. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel and get notified when that animation tutorial comes out. That's gonna be sometime next week. All right. Here we go. I have scaffolded out a brand new NativeScript Angular application here to play around with and to implement this accelerometer in. And this is what it looks like mirrored from my actual hardware device. Now we need to actually use the hardware device. See, I have it here connected to my computer and it's running the NativeScript Angular demo, the hello world application right there. Let me just get it in focus there and it's running the Hello World Angular application right there. Okay, from now on, you're just gonna see the image on the screen, and that's just the mirrored image directly from my device. This here is the list of items. If I go to app and item, it's this items component. So um, this is where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna clear all this out, and I basically just wanna have a grid layout in here. I'm gonna remove this list view, and inside here, I just wanna display X, Y, and Z coordinates that I'm picking up from my accelerometer. So I'm gonna use simple labels for that. I'm gonna bind the text attribute. By the way, Native Script Angular allows you to do binding two different ways, just like Angular on the web. We can bind using that syntax, or we can bind using this bracketed syntax. So we can bind this one to Y. And then you can also have Z, of course. Let's do Z. Now these X, Y, and Z should be properties defined in the component. So let's go to the items component here. We don't need to get any items and I don't need the item service in my constructor and I'm gonna remove the items array. What I will need in here is a public X, which is a number. I'll instantiate that to zero. We need the Y property and the Z property as well, like that. So that if I say Y is 1000 and save everything, you'll eventually see the application pop up and there are our three numbers right there, zero, 1000 and zero. Now we want these numbers to be updated using the accelerometer. In order to do that, I need to install the accelerometer plugin. So I'm gonna open up the terminal here within Visual Studio Code by pressing Control Backtick. And I'm going to say, well, let's clear this, Command K to clear everything. NPM install native script accelerometer. And this is a runtime dependency. So I'm gonna do dash dash save here and let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so that installed the latest native script accelerometer. If I check my package.json file, there it is right there. Okay, so we have it now and we can start using it. Let's go to the items component and here I'm going to do some imports from the accelerometer package. By the way, I don't need these demo imports here. I'm just gonna say import from native script accelerometer. And there's a few things we're gonna need here. One of them is accelerometer data, sure. We need the accelerometer options. When we kick off the accelerometer, those are the options we pass in. And then the start accelerometer updates. There's also the stop function here, but I mean, that just stops the accelerometer. <laughs> we don't need to demonstrate that. I'm gonna demonstrate only the start here, okay. 
So how do we start listening for any updates from the accelerometer? Let's go to our initialization function, this ng on init. This ensures that this component has been initialized so we can start things up in here. So here I'm gonna say start accelerometer updates and we're gonna get a callback here. This callback gets triggered every time we have an update from the accelerometer. Now we get some data back in here and it's of the type accelerometer data. That's important to know because data has a few things on it. It has our updated X, Y, and Z provided by the device. You can't run the accelerometer on a simulator and that's why we have to do this on a hardware device. All right, so data has that information on it and we wanna run some updates to X, Y, and Z in here. So let's create a separate function. It's gonna be a private function called update. We're gonna take an X, Y, and Z as the numbers. And then we'll just say this.x equals X, this.y equals Y, and finally this.z equals Z. Okay, now when we call this function from here, we're gonna pass in data.x, data.y, and data.z. Now there's also options that you can pass in to start accelerometer updates. We'll take a look at those in a second. Let's first see what the result of this is. So when I bring this up, this is coming from my real device again. You'll see that we have constant updates here from my hardware device. Now I'm going to kind of tilt it from the table. It's laying on my desk right now. I'm gonna tilt it over along its right edge. So I'm gonna lift its left side from the table. And I'm gonna put that at a 45 degree or almost 45 degree angle here. And you'll see that the first value is X. That value got affected. It's now at about 0.73. If I stand it up perpendicular to my desk, again, on its right edge, then you'll see X reach uh, about one, one point something something or 0.99. Okay, so that's the X axis. Now, if I flip the phone up and lift its bottom edge, then you'll see the Y value change now. If I set this phone perpendicular, then I have 0.99 on the Y value. And that's how this accelerometer works basically. Now, what if we wanted to subscribe to these changes in some other place, somewhere else in this application? It would be very convenient to use RxJS in this case in order to send these updates and have multiple subscribers that can listen for these changes. So imagine that we're gonna create a service here. I'm not gonna create a separate service. I'm just gonna do everything inside the component, but this will give you an idea of what we're after here. So I'm gonna import a few things from RxJS. We're gonna convert the stream of data because this is just a stream of data coming from the accelerometer. So we can convert it to RxJS. It's perfect for that since RxJS works with streams. And the most important thing in RxJS, well, arguably the most important is the observable class. So let's import that from RxJS and let's create a new variable here, a private property called accelerometer. And typically you would put a dollar sign to indicate that it's an observable. So this is gonna be of type observable. And then accelerometer data is the parameter that we're gonna store in here. Now RxJS is gonna allow us to use the vast number of different operators that RxJS comes with to manipulate this data that's coming in and to just mold the stream however we like. And the code for this is gonna be really, really simplified if we are using RxJS. You can do some really complex things here just by writing RxJS operators. So let's do this. Let's go to our ng on init function and I'm gonna say this dot accelerometer, we need to initialize it. It's gonna be a new observable and uh, we can pass in a callback with an observer here. And the observer is something that's listening to changes. So we can leverage the observer to give it next values of our accelerometer data. Now, right here, we have the start accelerometer updates function. We're gonna actually run that inside of our callback. So we're gonna start the accelerometer and then we're gonna get the data. And then instead of calling this dot update here, we're just gonna pass that data right to the observer. So observer.next, next Next is how you pass the next piece of stream data to the observable. And we're just gonna pass in our accelerometer data into there. All right, I'm gonna delete this commented outline so it's cleaner. 
Now, how do we get our X, Y, and Z properties updated here? Well, we can say this dot accelerometer and we can subscribe to it now. I'm subscribing to it here in the component, but really imagine that this part is actually in a service and then inside my component, I'm just accessing the accelerometer and subscribing to it. And then multiple components can subscribe to these data changes. So I'm gonna say this dot X equals data dot X and this dot Y equals data dot Y, just as an example here. So now we'll see that we're still getting those updates just like we did before. And if I tilt my device, you'll see that changing. Okay, so what have we accomplished besides separating out the observable and the subscription to it? Well, now we can use the myriad of RxJS operators here to filter out and do all kinds of crazy things with our observable. And keep an eye out for the next video where I'm gonna show you how we can use this accelerometer structure to build up a parallax effect. So that's using the accelerometer in native script. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at DigitalX over there. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.